Hi guys, and happy new year. I don't usually wear sequins, but I am filming this on New Year's Eve and I'm gonna go out wearing these sequins. We're just going for a meal with the kids, but like, I felt like I should be sparkly. So today's video is um, kind of about resolutions and kind of not. It's resolutions versus the law of attraction. And this is gonna switch some people off because it is a little bit hippy dippy, but stick with me at least for the first five minutes. So the difference between resolutions and the law of attraction for me is a resolution is a promise that you make to yourself and if you break that promise you lose faith in yourself. Whereas the law of attraction, the whole thing is basically having faith in yourself. You're like promising to have faith in yourself and to believe that the things that you want will come to you because you deserve them. I know, I know, stick with me. Um, but I like that the ethos between the two is that one, is to believe more in yourself than the other. One is to kind of say, um, I'm gonna try and be better, but always in the back of your mind, you're thinking, but am I really gonna do this? And the other is to just believe. I have always been a little bit superstitious, so I am kind of just by nature open to this, this idea of there being some kind of mystical force. But I, I'm not, you know, I, I am still really suspicious of these things as well. Like. I half believe and I'm half like, yeah, but really, like I, I don't believe that it is some magical force that helps things come to be. But I have seen things happen to me and things come to me because I've asked for them. And there comes a point where I think, well, when it comes to resolutions, not, you know, making serious choices in your life, but when it comes to resolutions, what is the harm in putting something out there saying, these are the things that I want and these are the things that I want to achieve in the year, versus these are the things that I'm gonna do myself and make these changes, because I feel like they go hand in hand. At the start of the year, I'd given myself 12 months on YouTube and just in my general like youtube internet-y thing um, before I go back to work full time, because things just weren't going that well. You know, I wasn't getting as many views on YouTube, which to be fair has not really changed. Um, I just wasn't seeing the kind of success that I wanted to see in the time that I'd been doing it. I felt like um, things were waning, it just, I didn't want to feel like I was wasting a big chunk of my life on something that just wasn't gonna to come to anything. And given that this is not, I was never part-time in my regular job because I was looking after the kids. I was part-time in my regular job, so I could dedicate time to this. I was always in full-time employment. Just part of that employment was self-employment. And so if, if one of your jobs is not doing that well, or it's not paying that well anymore, or you don't feel fulfilled by it anymore, then you go back to do something else, you know? It, it's a perfectly, reasonable decision that I'd made at the beginning of the year was that I was going to give myself 12 months to turn it around and if it didn't I was just going to go back to my office job full time. I was never going to quit YouTube or blogging, I just was going to scale back to to what I could do as a hobby level because I just didn't, I didn't want that pressure of making it into a job when I felt like it was completely out of my control how much success I could garner from it. So with that in mind, because I had made that decision, I'd put that out there, I started putting more time and effort into planning more content. And because I'd done that, when I was then offered the chance to pitch for a book deal, I already had all of this planning in place. So I was able to put something together that was really comprehensive. They went for it, I wrote the book, it was going to be published next month. And all of those things feel like they were spurred on by that initial decision. And so yeah, call it what you will. You know, I, I incentivized that, that thing for myself that if, if you don't achieve something, then you have to do this. And I wanted to be able to continue to do these things. I wanted to be able to continue to put as much time in as possible um, to my online activities as my regular job. And so I probably did things, I probably made decisions and made steps to make those things happen. But I don't know whether or not I could have had a resolution or could have done anything to make that happen. I just, I, I do, part of me does think that positive attracts positive and you know, I do believe in the law of attraction. Something brought these things to me. And I know, I, I have listened to other people say these things in the past and thought, oh, but I do have that, you know, we have to believe in something bigger than ourselves. And that is not a terrible thing to believe in. Once I had some free time again, once I'd actually written the book, cause that took an abnormal amount of time. <laughs> um, I'm sure it took more time for me than most people. Cause I just couldn't figure out how to even start. Once I'd actually done that, um, and I had some free time again, then I sat down and started planning the content again and kind of started my new year again in September. Um, and at the same time, because I was feeling quite positive about this whole law of attraction thing at this point, I thought I'm gonna start writing down some monthly goals. Um, and you know, these are things that I would like to achieve in this month. Now, um, you know, I don't like to talk about 
how we make money and like I don't like to make a big fuss of these things because it's uh, such an odd job but I will you know for the for the purposes of this and for the purposes of evidence um for those of you that are kind of on the fence I will kind of just like let you behind the curtain if you will so I wrote down that I wanted some campaigns um some people to want to work with me basically because all year nothing no one had contacted me um or you know very very minimal things um, hardly anyone had been in touch with me and the people that had been in touch with me it just wasn't things that I wanted to work on I do turn down things that I think are not appropriate I've had lots and lots of opportunities to work with um, brands like Weight Watchers and Slimming World and although I've talked about Slimming World in the past I've talked about it in a vague I like this but not like this kind of way and I never want to promote something that I think could be um, negative to someone's mental health or just general health you know it, I, what I'm saying is I don't accept everything that I'm offered and that's just one of the examples of things that I turn down quite regularly. Um, I don't know what, what that says about me um, but yeah things that I was being offered weren't the things that I wanted to do and I just was like not feeling great about the stuff that was coming in. So I wrote down that I wanted some campaigns with um, brands that I wanted to work with. I wanted to, to for some things to come into me um, and like maybe three days later I got an email about that Clairol um letting your hair go grey and it being all chill about it kind of campaign that I did that's a real roundabout way of of putting that but if you saw the video you know what I'm talking about and I felt really good about that campaign I was really happy to do it I thought it was a really nice positive female friendly campaign and it wasn't kind of um something that was going to make anyone feel worse about themselves and I felt really nice about working with them on that and that came in from nowhere from me suddenly deciding to write something down that I wanted and I got that email. It was really, really bizarre. Um, and there were a couple of other things, like personal things that came about on that list um, as well that month. And pretty much everything that I wrote down came true in some way, shape or form. And the following month I did the same. And again, the same things happened. You know, things came to me that I'd asked for that hadn't come to me, that I'd wanted, but I hadn't said that I'd wanted um in months and months and months and and suddenly they were there and it's kind of difficult to ignore like I say positive attracts positive is there are lots of real world explanations for this you know like if you're in a bad mood bad things happen to you because you find the bad in everything positive you find the good in everything you know just being open to things in itself that that is a huge help so there's probably real world explanations for all of these things there's probably something that I did something that I said someone that I spoke to something that I put out there on social media that attracted these things to me I'm you know I'm not a fool I don't believe in make-believe but I do believe that something about doing this had an impact on my life last year and I'm going to do the same this year. One really, really funny and super trivial thing that happened that totally pushed me over the edge right at the end of last year was Taco Bell opened in Doncaster near me. I was like the most excited. I queued for, I think it was 45 minutes by myself. Um, everyone else was in groups or couples. There was not one person that was not by themselves. It was just me. I love Taco Bell. Um, say what you will, love it. Don't at me. I love Taco Bell so much. Um, purely because there's hardly any Mexican restaurants and no takeaway Mexican restaurants. So obviously it's not the best Mexican food, but compared to McDonald's, I love me some Taco Bell. So I went um, and I wanted to be one of the first hundred people because you got a t-shirt. So you got like the first hundred people that were in the queue that were served got a t-shirt, like a commemorative t-shirt. And I really wanted one of these t-shirts. So I went and I said to Lee the night before, what I really want is number 32. So I remember... I was 32 when I got this t-shirt. Is, is this like the geekiest thing I've ever said? Possibly, but I like this stuff. I like things that are uh, memorable. I like things that are personalized. I like souvenir things. <laughs> and so um, I went with that in mind and you know, I didn't go um, and count anyone in front of me. There was no logic to this whatsoever, but I was standing in the line and I was listening to the people in front of me as they started to give out the t-shirts just as they opened. And the guy was going, right, okay, so there's probably this amount of people in front of us. And he was working it out and I'm listening to him thinking, I could be like near to someone who's got 32. Maybe they'll swap with me. I got to the front and I got shirt 32. I, I can't like, this just weird. It's a weird look and weird things happened to me since I started doing this that are abnormally lucky for me. I don't consider myself to be a particularly lucky person. I don't enter competitions for that reason. Don't play the lottery. I don't, 
Um, I just don't think that my look will come in. I'm not one of those people. Uh, and so for these little number of things to happen last year, it was too bizarre for me. And I wanted to share with you guys that this is how I'm going to do my resolutions because it's a bit of a, it's not an oddball way, but it's a bit of a hippy dippy way of doing things. But I don't think it's really any worse than doing regular resolutions because the resolutions that you are putting out there, it's just writing down something that you want this year. The difference being that one is something that I am going to do these things and you write them down because you haven't done them before. What's going to stop you from just breaking that promise this year? The difference is saying, I want this this year. So let's say um, one one resolution would be, um, I want to go to the gym, I want to get fit. And your law of attraction would be, I want to be fit by the end of the year. And I just feel like one is kind of something, maybe it's something over your head that you're thinking throughout, you know, there's no immediate thing, January 1st, have to go to the gym. But you are thinking, oh, this year I'm going to get fit. It's just a belief that this thing will happen. And so I think that you then make choices and you do things differently throughout that time that then just brings that to be true. Rather than telling yourself you have to do something, you kind of already believe that it's going to happen. And so it doesn't feel like a conscious effort. I don't know. I'm trying to put logic behind the magic um, because I don't truly believe in the magic. But oftentimes it's difficult to explain some things that happen. I, I'm i I'm all in for just saying I believe in it. Um, but at the same time, I, I do, I do realise that there has to be real world explanations for things. And that's one of them. But I think you just, it changes your mindset. It changes the way that you do things, the choices that you make. You know, like if somebody told you how you were going to die, you're not supposed to know about things because then it would imp- impact the way that you lived your life. Uh, and I feel like it kind of is a bit like that. It's kind of deciding your future and then your choices change accordingly because you've already decided that's what's going to happen. So I've written down some lifetime goals. I've written down some yearly goals. So something that I want to achieve like this year. And then every month at the end of the month, I'm going to sit down and write some things that I want to achieve that month. I'm not going to beat myself up if these things don't happen, but they keep happening. It's weird. (laughs) Like I'm going to keep doing it because they keep happening. It's just stupid things. Like we were going a boxing day um on Christmas Eve we'd been uh, shopping and we got an amazing car parking space and uh Lee now is completely like we make fun of it but he'll say like oh wish for this thing for me because things keep happening keep things keep going true so we were in the car and I was like we're gonna get the same parking space we just are it was not like we should not have got that parking space we did not get that there early enough it was like directly outside the doors we got the exact same parking space that we'd got on Christmas Eve it was just there It was insane and I don't need an explanation. (laughs) I'm just cool with saying, okay, I asked for that and it happened. So moving on from that stuff, um, I thought I would kind of update you on some of my plans for this year. Number one, the most important thing is that I am actually going to be working an extra day at my day job. Now, this kind of ties in because at the beginning of the year I'd said, um, if things didn't turn up, or if things didn't look up, turn around, whatever, um, I would be doing more more hours at my day job. Um, But I thought that my only option would be to go full-time. I really didn't want to go full-time because regardless, I wanted to be able to spend some time doing the internet stuff. Um, And so I I wanted to have at least a day, but I just wasn't sure whether or not that would be an option. So came to the end of the year and I wasn't going to ask for full-time. I didn't feel like I I got to that stage. I felt like I was still on the cusp of... um, maybe I don't know. And I thought things had picked up slightly, um, but it could go either way this year. So I was going to give myself another 12 months. And around Christmas Eve, my boss came to me and asked me if I would go full time. Bear in mind, I'd never mentioned at work any any interest in doing any more hours. I've never said anything about it. And he asked me if I would go full time or if I would work more hours. And I said, I wouldn't go full time, but I would do one more day. And I never in a million years thought that they would even want one more day. I thought they'd want someone extra full time or they want me to stay as I am. And they took one more day. So I'm now going to be working three days a week. Um, So I'm I'm going to have one less day a week for my YouTube stuff. So we'll see how that goes. But bear that in mind, you know, that's going to happen um, this year. Things may change. I may have to reduce uh, some of my output in all of the stuff that I do because I'm going to be working my office job a little bit more. But um, yeah, how weird is that? (laughs) Is it... 
is it just me? Am I now just like in tune with um, thinking everything's a little bit mystical? Do you ever get in those moods where you're like, oh, it's a sign, everything's a sign? I just thought I was kind of, I was probably cutting my nose off despite my face, um, which I think is the phrase, by saying no, because when am I ever gonna be able to just say, can I have an extra day? Probably never. So I thought I would take the opportunity um, and it will definitely take the pressure off earning things from my internet activities, which was the whole point at the beginning of the year. But this, I feel like I've got the best of both worlds. So as I said in my last Vlogmas vlog, I am planning on um, kind of canceling, nixing, whatever you want to call it, stopping all regular vlogging activity on my YouTube channel. Because last year the vlogs weren't well watched. I apologise if you really love the vlogs. I love filming them, but they take a lot more time to edit than a sit down vlog like this. And um, I feel like these days there's just too much out there. People are not prepared to sit and watch vlog after vlog after vlog. And so what I'm going to be doing is um, hopefully a little bit more planned out content where I sit down and I've got a little bit more of a an idea of what I'm going to say. Previously I would just sit down and ah, we'll see what happens. But it is going to be hopefully higher quality content for you moving forward, even if it's ever so slightly less. There will still be vlogs, they're just not going to be regular. So if I want to vlog one day, there's going to be a vlog. But there's not going to be weekly or monthly vlogs, there's not going to be daily vlogs. I'll still do vlogmas. I love vlogmas. Um, and I'm going to be over on Insta Stories a lot more. That's my plan. Um, that's my plan right now. Who knows what's going to happen moving forward, but for now, it's going to be Friday uploads. There'll be at least one video a week, and then if I want to upload another time, I will as a bonus video. So for example, if I was to do a sponsored video, it would be an in addition to that Friday video. That's my plan for the year. I'm also going to do lots more crash test mummy, so more like trialing of things, some more wear and compare, because these are things that people ask me to bring back, and there's going to be more style content. Since my book is released next month, which is super exciting, but all of the content that I had planned last year, I ended up putting into the book, so I didn't want to kind of double it up, and now I'm going to release some of that um, in video form, kind of around the time the book is released. Uh, and then probably for the rest of the year as well, I'm going to keep it up with a series of Finding My Style, which was um, the series that I was going to bring out last year that then ended up being a book. I can't tell you how excited I am about that, by the way. And that has had no impact financially on me whatsoever. <laughs> Someone said the other day, um, I put on Instagram that I was going to be stopping vlogging. And I didn't say anything about scaling back or anything. And I didn't say about... Um, well, I just, I just kind of said I was going to stop vlogging and asked what kind of content people liked. And I mean, lots of people did say they liked the vlogs and they were disappointed. So I appreciate that. You know, things could change, but that's my plan right now. Um, and this one person said something like, all these bloggers, uh, they get, what did she say? Something like they get really big and then they do this and then they do that. And she was basically saying that um, these bloggers these days, that's what she said, um, were like using the platform to become famous. And then they were getting all these deals, like book deals, she specifically said, and um, makeup lines and stuff, and then saying they're too busy for YouTube. That is not the case in any way, shape or form. If I'd made it big on YouTube, I wouldn't be doing more hours at my day job. Aside from the fact that I do like having my day job as um, a just in case, because I do have, you know, I have a family, I have bills to pay, and YouTube and any kind of freelance work is not guaranteed money. I don't like relying on any kind of freelance work. I I wouldn't be able to, I'm not great with money, I wouldn't be able to kind of rely on myself having a reserve of cash at all times, I just can't. Um, so I would always have to have a day job regardless of what I earned. But I haven't like been given some huge influx of cash from this book deal. I will make money if it sells, but even then it will probably equate to less than minimum wage for how long it took me to actually write it, and considerably less than the average campaign that I could work on. I could make a lot more money working on one sponsored campaign than I will on this book, is my guess. Um, but it was just a passion project. I, it's going to be the first actual physical thing, like tangible success that has come out, or tangible achievement would be better, um, that's come out of doing this. And I feel amazing about it. I, I'm going to have something in my hands. And you know, it's really taken the pressure off wanting to hit 100,000 on YouTube, because that was totally out of my control. And it has really ruled a lot of my um, feelings of whether or not things are successful, whether or not I can, I'm can, i closer or further away from hitting that 100,000. I think I always just wanted that award um, for hitting 100,000 because I felt like one day I would stop doing this and I'd have nothing to show for it. And it would just be like a blip on my, you know, what, were, what was I doing there? 
Whereas a book is an actual achievement. It's something that I was able to do because of this. And yeah, it's a totally separate and physical achievement. I think I'm going to feel um, less pressure to succeed on YouTube in general because of that. So that's amazing. And I can see where she's coming from with that comment, but that is not the case at all. You know, nobody's, nobody's getting rich and famous over here. Anyway, that is it. I'm not really making any specific resolutions apart from the fact that I want my content on YouTube to be better. I want to be more consistent with my blog. I'm just generally gonna be, I'm gonna spread myself across all platforms a little bit more than I have done. Um, and hopefully I'm gonna just have way more time to do that since all of the book stuff is finished. Although, we are still talking about maybe changing the cover. <sighs> it never ends. I'll be like, when I've got that book in my hands, I just, I'll probably just have a sleep, just a really long sleep. I would love to know what you guys are resolving this year, or if any of you are like super on board with the law of attraction thing like I am. I know, I know it's hippy dippy nonsense, but so are resolutions really, because how many people really make resolutions and keep them? It is all just you like hoping or wishing into the abyss. The difference being that one, in my mind, is one is like a belief that you can do something. One is like, this is gonna happen for me. And the other thing is, I really need to do this thing and it's going to be like weighing on you that you need to do this thing and it's it's more of a job that you're giving yourself than a belief in yourself is my feeling so even if you don't believe in the like wish it want it do it nonsense then at least you can kind of get on board with the I believe this can happen you know rather than I resolve to do this I resolve that this will happen you know I think there's I think there's something to it write it down it can't hurt Every time